Wow, my story is really funny. It's not even by hip hop group that I saw hip hop or break dance per se. Um, I mean, I was probably six or seven years old, and at that time, one of the famous groups in the world was New Kids on the Block. And so, like, I was like watching TV one in the song Boom Boom Oh, yeah. and I see these ones going with mostly in the music video. And for me, that was my first introduction to breakdowns. And I remember telling my cousin, right, keep my leg deep and the other leg deep. And then I tried to like imitate what they were doing on TV. That was probably my first introduction. But then I never really got into it at that age. Only later on, not much later on, like three years later, probably 10 years old, 11 years old. And we started seeing these music videos of POC on TV and Brasilianica. And probably at that time, and once uh, Brasilian covered an interview at that time, Haras was still on TV, and then I just saw his Brasilian cup, and then uh, Baby Out, and then Dick Phillips here. I can't remember who it was, either Cheesy or Shorty, the Twin Fleas, and I was like, wow, that's what I want to do. <laughs> that's uh, what I want to do. And yeah, and then Nathan, then. I don't know where I mean, I didn't live in one house with my brother. Obviously, we grew up together. But, like, then he went out somehow, somewhere from a BMX rider to doing breakdowns. But at the time, I also wasn't yet interested. Because I was thinking, like, playing in the road is better. <laughs> I played marbles around the bed, trying to break dance when I was still a kid. Um, and then, myself and Ambrose was in the same primary school. And funny enough, Ambrose danced in the school, and I didn't. <laughs> that's on the school. Um, and then when Nathan and Dwayne met up, that's the only, only time I started getting interested into this thing because they did a show, even though it was broken, or just somebody would speak us on the park and tall, and they did a show. What they did, I don't know, but they called it breakdowns, and I said, okay, I'm going to start practicing also now. And then we learned from tapes and stuff, like music videos we record from TV, you know, um, recording that time, like that song Run DMC and Jason Nevins, uh, it's like that, that came on. So we recorded that song and on video cassette obviously and started practicing from there and seeing what these guys were doing. We really didn't know how to do it. Um, but we worked from there and then also in Bonteville there was one one guy, but he looked like right on top, like if I could say, uh, close to Mr. Fat side, he lives there. Um, and we walked to this man, to this guy's house, and he was like the grandmaster guy. <laughs> we had to go to his house and he's like teaching us what to do and what not and what not. And we thought it was so super cool what he did. I don't know if realized a few years later, after we progressed now, practicing a lot and stuff, <laughs> what he did was actually just really simple. But he also vanished. I don't know what happened to that guy. But we started the. Um, and since then, it's been a very long journey. If I can be really straightforward, I was never really into hip hop. I only love breakdancing. <laughs> um, apart from breakdancing, I love jazz music. I love playing drums. I love a lot of things. But I love breakdancing as well. So, people was my only connection to hip hop. You know, and, uh, and in with Reddit even at that time. And, then having the opportunity to listen to some tracks, which I got to eventually, and which I like. But to me, I was never really into hip hop. But into B Boy, yes, definitely. You know, in all honesty, I was never really into hip hop. But B Boy, yes. But like I said, uh, from when we started, it's been a long journey. Also started with Crazy Hip Squad. Um, I've only really been in two groups. I won't call Bibika because Bibika was like work for me, <laughs> you know, it's like work. Um, I joined Prasavanika in 2002, 2001, 2002 I joined Prasavanika um, and that was something totally different, that was like going from the streets into corporate, <laughs> the corporate world, you know, you know, you're going to gigs and you have to act a certain way, um, you're getting free things, which was not really something we were used to, you know, growing up where we grew up and be going at little competitions and stuff. Uh, so you get stuff and you get paid for what you do, and, uh, which also, in a way, um, made room for greed. 
you know, and where I can, maybe so I can get an idea where these people that are progressing, where they come from. Because there's a lot of money out there for what we do, but we are not introduced and we are not, um, it's not for us easy, accessible to go to that places and also eat from these fruits these people are eating. Um, but I've been there, I've had a taste of that and it was great, it was fun. Um, but like, people have their favourites and they will keep pushing their favourites. It's like, the same as you get in the corporate world with nepotism in the job situation. That same thing happens in the Bebo community. Um, it's like the story of this guy, Joshua Bell, a famous violent player. I don't know if you know him, but um, he just went to go sit um, at New York Station. I don't know if you heard that story. He just went to go sit at New York Station like, uh, like a hobo. Nobody knew who he was. Actually, people knew who he was, but they didn't know it was him. So he was just sitting there, like, playing and complicated pieces. He was playing, people were passing by like normal busy day going to work. And on that day, he made like $30. I mean, it's Joshua Bells, the world's most famous violence player. Um, he made like $30. And like a week before that, that same dude had a sold out concert that cost hundred dollars <laughs> to go to that concert. That same dude sitting there. The model of the story is people look at us like, you know, who are we? But do they know what we can do and our, what effort it takes to do what we do? So I think all of us has like a Joshua Bell story. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, we're not just like anybody. I mean, we are worth something, you know. And it's time people should start respecting us for that. You know, we really want something. And the stuff we do, the things you see on TV, do not try to sit down and practice it. You know, um, respect the technique, <laughs> seriously. <laughs>